One experience that I had, this was a, about two years ago, and it had been something that I'd wanted to do for years, and that was go skydiving. Now, has anyone ever been skydiving? Okay, one person, okay. Would anyone here, by the way, have any interest ever in going skydiving? Okay, that's... If the plane was on fire. If the plane was on fire, okay. Yeah, that is, you know, by the way, you ask that question of people and half the room is like, yeah, I wanna go, I wanna go. The other half is out the door running away. They want nothing to do with skydiving ever or if the plane's on fire. So I, um, I convinced my, my younger brother and my father and we decided to go skydiving. So we went up to a little place. Did you go in Pepperell by any chance? Oh, okay. So we went to a little place in Pepperell, Massachusetts. Uh, which is, for those of you that don't know, it's on the northern tip, right on the, the Nashua border, I believe. And so uh, we're all excited to go skydiving. I mean, this has been something that I'd wanted to do for literally for years. I just, I thought it would be so exciting. I mean, one thing about me uh, that you will learn is that I have over the past 10 years, I've really tried to, anytime there's, there's something that's outside of my comfort zone, I really try to embrace it and just do it. Uh, because I, I do believe that when you rise to those occasions, when something makes you nervous, really gets your heartbeat going, we all know what I'm talking about, uh, and you do it, regardless of whether it's a professional or personal goal, uh, I, think, I think it's a growth opportunity. And so I decided we, we go skydiving, and so I'm all excited, and I'm starting to get kind of cocky, because I got to think about it for a few days, I'm thinking, this is, this is gonna be, we got this. So I get to the skydiving facility, and the second that I get to this facility, I was, Furious. Turns out, you have to be attached to some guy at your back. <laughs> and I'm thinking, come on, man, I don't need this. And I'm pleading with the guy. I, I, was, I swear to you, I was, I was just this moment of cockiness. I'm pleading, I'm like, come on, buddy, I can do this. I can pull my own cord, I've got this. And he looks at me and he's like, no. <laughs> so we go back and forth for a little bit. And uh, I wasn't going to win that battle, so finally I'm like, okay, fine, wait, 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 wait. Let's, just, let's just do this. So the first thing that happens is you pay. Uh, and then you go into a little room called uh, the, the waiver room. Yeah, <laughs> that's relating this with me. So you go into the waiver room, and, uh, and basically what the waiver room is, is just to give you an idea, because I think it's, it's entertaining. So you have a, a row of, so it's a small room. I mean, no bigger, probably no 200 square feet, right? And uh, no wider than that table, and from basically from the wall to there. And on one row, uh, it's just a row of chairs, and on the other is a TV. And on the TV, they play a video. <laughs> You're making me smile. They play a video uh, of an attorney Telling you the 300 ways that you can die. <laughs> you know, fine, all right, cool. And I think they do it on video because, you know, even if, you know, for some reason someone can't read, they want to make sure, you know, that everyone sees how you're going to die. And so, uh, and just to give you an idea, because I, I, I really, thinking back on this is pretty fun. Um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like, she's not a very dynamic uh, speaker, but she's trying to maintain eye contact with the camera, so she'll do this. She's, she's kind of sitting at a desk, uh, and clearly her notes are right here, and she's trying to look at the camera, so she'll say something like this, you know, uh, you can die from skydiving because your parachute doesn't open. <laughs> you can die from skydiving because your skydiving instructor passes out, and you'll probably die. Okay. <laughs> So she goes on for 10 minutes, and so, uh, it, you know, now my heart rate's starting to go up a little, I'm starting to get a little nervous, but I got this, I'm an adrenaline junkie, this is the easy stuff. So you sign the, the waiver, and you walk out, and uh, we meet our skydiving instructors. Now my guy, uh, his name was Jason, and I, when I say this, I mean this with all honesty, he was insane. Picture this, this is your guy, right? He had on a giant cat in the hat hat, <laughs> seriously, with a bicycle helmet strap to hold it on in the air. Okay, you didn't you didn't have that guy? No. Did you? Okay, he was he was like he's like famous uh, with with that. And so we go through, uh, but he was a nice guy. So we go through about 30 minutes of instruction, you know, and by the way, it, there, there's a lot more than I expected. I thought this was gonna be really easy, but you know, if you're falling one way, you put your arms that way, this way, you go this, and landing is obviously <laughs> very important, and so knees up. So we go through all that instruction, and now I'm, now I'm, I'm feeling good, but I am getting nervous. So next thing that, that happens is um, you, uh, you do like a, a, before you actually get onto the plane, you do just a light strap up. So you're, you're kind of, you're just attached to the person in the back, not, not fully, but um, you get on. And, and I just wanna say, I, uh, just as a personal thing, I have nothing against Jason, 
but uh, you know, ladies always appreciate this point. Um, I have nothing against him, I just don't know him. And so when there is a, per a complete stranger attached to your back, uh, you do what I call the uh, skydive waddle. Hips out and just kind of awkwardly waddling onto that plane, right? And so we get onto the plane and there's a, a balance beam chair thing that uh, you strap into. So we're feeling good and um, now, we, now we kind of we start to more fully strap up. And it's a very small plane, by the way. I don't know if you've ever been on a, like a really small plane, but those things, they don't, they don't not, not like a commercial liner where they go like that, they just go whew. So, feeling good though. And I look over, there's some, I don't know, 19, 20 year old girl who's really enthusiastic. And so, and she's clearly skydiving for her first time. So we become like skydiving buddies. We're just like, yeah, yeah. So plane takes off, heart rate uh, going up a little, but I'm, I'm still, feeling, still feeling confident. And then we get to 13,000 feet, which is jumping altitude. And at that moment, they do something that seemed like a really bad idea. <laughs> they open the door. Suddenly, all the blood that's in my face, gone. I'm freaking out. <laughs> I look back at that 19, 20 year old girl, and she's still like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hated that girl, by the way. <laughs> and then suddenly, it occurs to me in my moment, of absolutely freaking out, I realize, thank you, God, I'm attached to this man at my back. <laughs> and I, I learned something in the next few minutes, by the way, because it happens fast. It happens really fast. Literally, the door opens. You may remember this man. I mean, the you, you think that you're going to have a few minutes to kind of settle in with the door and the wind. And no, it's literally just everyone out. So I see my brother, boo, my dad, boo. And we were the last off the plane, uh, the, the last kind of tandem people uh, where you have two people off the plane. And so we get to the door, um, just like we practiced, bend your knees. And, and by the way, uh, we're, we're cool now. We're, <laughs> any issues we had before, we're good. <laughs> so we get to the door and uh, bend your knees on a three count, just like we practiced. One, two, and time out for just one second. Um, He's inside the plane, but I'm out. So I'm like a dog with his head out the window. I'm just like, <laughs> just wind coming at you. So everyone, just one, two, and right before we said three, I don't know if I said it or I dreamt it, but I look back and I say, you know what you're doing, right? <laughs> he never answered. Three, and we fall out the plane. And by the way, uh, it, it was one of the most incredible experiences, 43 seconds of pure free fall. And by the way, when you ask people, uh, I don't know if you agree with this, Matt, but most people say that it feels like you're flying more than you're falling. You know, because you kind of hit that terminal velocity and, and you, don't, you don't feel that acceleration and you just feel uh, like you're, you're flying. Of course, by the way, on the other hand, the first three seconds that you fall out that plane, you're just tumbling and all this, you're convinced you're dead. Uh, you make peace with whatever you make peace with and whew, it's a good run. Um, but once you flatten out, uh, an amazing, amazing experience. And, you know, when we landed, it, it really occurred to me, um, what an amazing experience. You know, here was something that I was so afraid to do. And what I really, when I look back, if I hadn't had him attached to me, I'm not sure if I would have actually stepped outside that window or out that door or whatever you want to call it, the hole. But fortunately, I was attached to him at that moment. And so he was there and he kind of pushed me into it. And so to me, when I look at programs like this, I think a lot of times, you know, I, I think of myself almost as, uh, as like Jason. You know, here I am, um, of course, we're, we're in a really safe environment uh, and uh, I'm here to kind of uh, obviously give you information, but also to, to push you, to, to force you to take that first step.